Hi guys, my name is Chris Rebert, and I'm the season supervising director, as well as one of the co-directors for this episode of The Walking Dead. Um, and here's the first 20 minutes of the game. It was really important for all of us to kind of find a way into Clem's perspective and where she is currently. Um, and this scene kind of starts to sell the world and how the world is. And as you can see, zombies aren't necessarily a new thing. We're kind of used to them. Though Clem is constantly on her toes, I think that's important for the story. And that continues through here as we reveal AJ in the backseat playing with a gun like there's n nothing to it. Like it's not a big deal. One, one exciting thing about the scene is that uh, we kind of accidentally paralleled the first season. Um, we thought it was important to kind of sort of start off with, with Clem and AJ on the road and then not realizing that that's how Lee's journey started at the beginning of season one. I don't like goofball. I'm too big. So you'll you'll get a sense for the character dynamic and the relationship in the scene. We wanted to really just drop the player into where they were and what their relationship was like and how the world is kind of beating on them and just doing their best to get through every day. What's wrong? AJ? Hungry. And then this beat, particularly with the selection of all the things on the seat, AJ's expressed that he's hungry, Clem is trying to do something about it, but I think we wanted to present a situation in which Clem could try everything possible, but even even just feeding herself and AJ was difficult. And that, that seemingly easy task to somebody who's not living the apocalypse is, is difficult, but Clem is trying, and AJ's trying, and I think that's really important to the story. Bring to a boy. Uh, on second thought, never mind. That's only gonna make you hungrier. Here you go. About all we got. What about you? Go for it. We'll find something else soon. I believe you. As you can see by this environment, we're really trying to make sure that we built the world that Clem and AJ live in. You can see that it's dilapidated, that it's overgrown, um, and you'll notice a lack of music and a, and a real emphasis on ambient and diegetic sound. And not to say we don't use music, but we're very careful about when we do and when we do not. We gonna do it? Think so. Looks clear. We thought it was kind of important to to do a mission right up front here that felt sort of everyday to Clem and AJ, mm -hmm. so that we're not super loaded with specific narrative stakes. The goal is simple, find food, as you saw, um, or you're about to see on the top of the screen. You know, we, we see in exploring this trunk and as she collects the few things they have left, find some water as well, they're low on water. need water, too. You're about to see in this next shot, in the far distance, our graphic black um, art style, which is really cool, and we're trying to evoke the comics as much as possible. Um, but we're also trying to keep an eye on, or really just push the lighting and the tonality and the mood of things. What does it mean? I personally worked with our art director, Dave Bogan, to try to make the scene feel feel very much like the world was was sort of over, for lack of a better word, and that it had kind of developed its own personality, this, this bleak sense of that's both warm, but also sort of uh, isolating and, and a little bit unpredictable. We're about to have our first actual one-on-one -on -one walker encounter here. Um, and it was important for us um, as, as game developers and storytellers to understand how walkers um, fit into Clement Age's world. Um, and as you're about to see, 
um, they're not surprised by the presence of a walker, but at the same time, they're a little, they're still unnerved, right? It's, even though they're used to them and they've encountered many, if not, uh, hundreds, if not thousands of walkers, there's still an element of this could go wrong at any second, um, and they have to be careful. No bites. Next, we get in there. We often kind of talk about just living in the wilderness and walkers just kind of end up becoming like wolves or any other creature that could, that could harm you in the wilderness. And as you can see, there's fully explorable environments and um, if the more you explore, the more you'll be rewarded as you're about to see with this shimmering object, which is a collectible. Um, there's several objects in the game that you can collect and kind of keep in your inventory, mm, and they do have a purpose that I will not give away. But for those of us who like to run around and, and, and look at things and explore these beautiful landscapes, there's going to be some reward. And some of them aren't just sort of uh, collectibles like that. There's a lot of little things to click on that tell hopefully a larger story. And I think with, with, the, with the bird song and all that kind of stuff and the overgrowth, you'll notice that, that, that the world is very much a character in this season. Um, and the fact that it's been so long since the apocalypse broke out. Mother Nature is this sort of relentless force, um, and I think that's a big part of The Walking Dead and living in the apocalypse. And it's kind of recovered and what do we do grown back and taken the world back to some degree. After that? Um, we talked about the lack of music, and I think it's important in this case specifically that this place is kind of uh, haunted and unpredictable, and we don't really want to put music in here because it starts to make you feel something one way or another and that's not how Clem and AJ perceive the world. They're kind of constantly assessing things, constantly digesting what things mean, how things feel, what's around every corner. As we enter the train station we see that there's this zombie couple or this walker couple and as I was talking about the importance of the history of the environments we also wanted to kind of give a little reverence in the way that, that, that we did in earlier seasons to the fact that, that, that all walkers were once people and they had a story themselves and we really wanted to think about that and put that on screen and c kind of expand the world in those tangible ways which you can see, what you can feel, what you can hear and that just kind of fleshes the world out the more you explore and not everything is going to be um, entirely defined because, you know, these people have obviously passed on but it is there to explore and you can find more information about it and start to get a sense of what their story might have been like. I know you're hungry. I am too. We'll find something. I promise. And again, carrying through that through line of hunger and scarcity and sort of desperation. That's the world that Clem and AJ live in. As you can see and hopefully feel here, that, that's still the case. They're very sort of just tired and exhausted and still trying, but it's tough. Please leave us alone. This is what we wanted. Yeah, and there you can see that we're, we're really trying to give a sense of, even even to the walkers, um, and that was something I think was important in season one. And, and we, you won't get to do this with every walker, but trying to give a sense that these people were once human, and they had a story themselves, and that's something you can uncover, and that affects uh, Clem and AJ's story, even if it's kind of cursory or tonally or subconsciously. It's, it's the world that they live in. And it's not just as easy as walking around stabbing monsters. <laughs> That's not happening. Do we get the key? Mm, it's risky. Might be another way through that door. Let's look around. Let's be smart. That's right. As you can tell, we're cutting back and forth between the orbital camera uh, and, and more obvious cutscene moments. And finding that balance was, was tough but important. I think we, we struck a good balance in how, to, in how to cut in and out in a way that feels organic. The key or the window, those are our options. It's dark in there. We should kill the monsters. Here you can see AJ at his most sort of ruthless and full survivor mode. Um, we, we talked a lot about his character and, and him growing up in a world that, that was entirely after the zombie apocalypse or the walker apocalypse. Um, 
and he's his morality, his psychology is is been forged in that world. He's not really thinking with the same sort of values and priorities that we would be. We need to know if there's food inside. And I need you to be brave. Okay, I can be brave. Lift me up. Once you're through, unlock this door. Got it. This little sequence here, we wanted to try to use some cinematic techniques to, as often as possible, put you in Clem's headspace. You know, her imagination is running wild here. She hears the, the walkers behind her making noise. AJ's disappeared, and for a moment there, she's just kind of terrified of what might happen to him, and I think that's kind of indicative of, of, of many situations they've found themselves in. You gotta see this, Clem. <sighs> Again, a lot of the the environment pieces in here. Hopefully, get a better sense of what the the story of those walkers was. No one's here. No one's ever anywhere. It's always just monsters. There aren't that many people left, kiddo. That's sad. How many did there used to be? Hmm. So many. Clem and AJ are seeing the important things here in front of us, that they had a bed and, a, and some security and some bullets. And there you can see AJ's a great shot, Just and I think that's important to note Remember that he, he himself is a, is a capable su survivor. You know this. This is an interesting example of, the, of trying to establish the relationship that already Whatever exists when the season starts between Clem and AJ. They're not, they're not parent and child, they're not brother and sister, they're kind of somewhere well, in between flipping. with a little bit of be best sure friends thrown in there. Hope you know, so. I think it's important that Clem is capable and skilled and badass and everything else, all the other uh, characteristics we attribute to her, she's still trying to figure things out. Spoiled. Um, and Sorry, she's trying to help AJ do the same thing. I'm gone. Fuck. As you can see there, we, we picked the shitbird option. We called him shitbird in the car seat. Hey, watch the swears. Well, you said shitbird before. Do as I say, not as I do. And he, he kind of threw that back in our face when we told him not to swear. He's paying attention. Huh. Something under here. Door? Huh. Yeah. And as we talked about consequences and risk-reward, here comes the risk. Um, and the reward did not pay off. You know, we've done something, we've taken a chance, and now it's gotten us into a pinch, to say the least. Yeah, it is. We could eat for weeks with this much. It's rigged! AJ! So we're about to kick off uh, our first sort of action set piece of the game. And you'll see uh, how we blend. I think we wanted to play with these new systems of uh, free combat, but also not abandon the sort of action set pieces um, that forward the narrative and really help the pace move um, and have us as storytellers help control the pace so now we're engaging these walkers here we saw the first one and we talked about how they were a little bit more used to them but now there's there's a couple more and it's not as easy um they can gang up on you there's still a force to be reckoned with and that's something we wanted to be very conscious of and not not just take for granted that that walkers were dangerous it's important that, that to us that walkers still come across as something to be feared and respected and they're also an, a force of nature that that has an agenda and that is to eat you. So every single one is a, is a danger to Clem and the player. And this little narrative action sequence right here is something we're all we're all pretty excited and uh, proud of. And we worked a lot to get into one shot, um, one uncut shot. And I think that's important from a narrative uh, standpoint to kind of anchor you to Clem's point of view and to AJ's point of view. 
it's important that we stay with her in this moment because this is one of the worst s- situations she's ever found herself in, she and AJ both. Um, so staying inside the car, never cutting outside, staying in one, you can feel in real time how scary this all is, how close we come to our potential death. And while we had the, uh, the sort of uh, 360 orbital camera combat, we do want to make sure that we, we have these action set pieces that are both fun to design and really important to kind of keep the, the momentum and the pacing and the story moving side by side. It's also important to see that AJ's not just a bystander in all of this, he's helping Clem as best he can. When the going gets tough, much like it's happening in this sequence, he needs to kind of jump in the action and help. As you can hear with the sound, um, something in the animation, some of Clem's noises that she makes. I think we were, it was really important to us in grounding this in reality and just making um, the hits, the impacts, um, feel very uh, realistic in that they burn calories and, you know, when, I, when you kick a windshield, it, it hurts. And when you're starving and looking for food, it feels like you're expelling calories every time you have to attack something. It's not something that comes easy, even if you are capable. Um, and here we are ramping up to our finale. AJ, buckle up! you guys enjoy playing it as much as we enjoyed making it and that's it thanks so much for tuning in